Off a day, KUAM News. Welcome to the after party where we uh, discuss the issues and take the gloves off with my co host, Sabrina Salas Mantinani. Off a day, everybody. We have with us our guests for our first after party. Fernando Estevez, he's a former senator. We have former Congressman Robert Underwood, and we have former PBS Guam General Manager, former uh, Director of the Department of Corrections, slash, slash right. with the Republican Party of Guam, <laughs> Kate Balthazar. Off a day. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. I guess right off uh, the bat, you know, one of the, the hot issues that uh, dropped over the weekend was uh, Congressman uh, Mike Sinicholas apparently uh, having some trouble getting that uh, district office open. And uh, I think there's the issue of the district office not being open and then his reaction to our reaction to the district office uh, not being open. Um, Kate, thoughts on this? Uh, <clears throat> you know, I was... I was kind of wondering the same thing. Um, I awkwardly, um, uh, hi Jennifer, I awkwardly had to reach out to Jennifer Wynn on Facebook. Um, I was successful, uh, I'll have to say that, but it was awkward. It was kind of, um, we were getting calls in our office, um, uh, constituents-wise saying, I've been calling all the senators' offices, do you know where I can find uh, our congressman? And for those who aren't familiar, Kate is actually the chief of staff, right, for Senator Will Castro. I'm the chief of policy. Chief of right, policy, yes. Right. For Senator Will Castro. Yeah, and I, and I think that, um, you know, I heard from Senator Moylan that, that people were calling uh, his office, people were walking in, obviously uh, the Federal Affairs uh, Chair, Senator Regine Visco. I heard from uh, Democrats and Republicans, um, you know, basically saying, like, like you said, people were wondering uh, not just where the congressman was, but uh, how they could get a hold of his district director, any of the staff. I mean, I was unsuccessful. I tried calling uh, Jennifer twice today, went straight to voicemail. Tried messaging her on uh, Facebook, which is awkward to me because I don't understand why I need to reach out to my congressman or his staff on Facebook. It's such an unofficial and unsecure mm -hmm. platform. It was awkward. It was awkward for me. And we, we fielded quite a few calls um, about that and suggestions for uh, maybe have a town hall, uh, maybe just have a, a desk somewhere. Something. Uh, something somewhere where um, people could, could come and... and uh, I said, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to help you in the best way I can, but I didn't. You didn't get a response? <laughs> uh, Congressman uh, Dr. Robert Underwood, uh, you know, I took some heat for interview, interviewing you. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I think what's really important here is uh, Congressman Nicholas. I mean, since he's been a senator, uh, he just really disregards the media and he uh, puts out his narrative on his social media. That's his base. But the problem with that is that uh, we're not afforded the opportunity to ask questions. Um, uh, you know, to even uh, fact check or to, to cross reference anything that he says. So, uh, my initial thought when the district office wasn't open was okay, uh, you know, uh, Congressman St. Nicholas gave his, his explanation, but I wanted to see uh, what people with relevant experience had to say, and yeah. you had a lot to say. Well, uh, thank you, and uh, uh, nobody called me, so I'm, uh, <laughs> that, uh, nobody called me, so what should I do? <laughs> uh, but uh, it is uh, really. <laughs> Uh, constituency service is at the core of uh, y what you do as a represent representative at the federal level because people have problems and issues with the federal level. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, uh, social security checks, they have uh, issues with their veterans' benefits. There's just a whole range of issues uh, that can only be taken care of by a congressional office because federal agencies are obligated to respond to congressional offices. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, I, when, when I got elected in, uh, in uh, 1992, when I was sworn in in 93, I had a temporary office. I hired two people right away. I had a temporary office and I had a temporary number. And uh, because we knew that that was the, the, the essence of it. So, uh, you know, uh, the mode in which uh, uh, Congressman St. Nicholas apparently tries to communicate with people uh, is really uh, troubling. That is, that's the, that's not, it's not just off, maybe there's reasons that the office will open and, and maybe it opens up in two months and then everything gets resolved and he has a super staff and all that. But, Hopefully. But, mm -hmm. but it, the, the mode of uh, communicating is troubling. Uh, when, when I was in office over 10 years, I had over 70 village meetings. I made it a, a regular function to come back to Guam, hold a village meeting, hold a press conference. I think Sabrina was in several of my press <laughs> conferences. So I tried Way to, back when. Yeah, so I tried to, you know, open it up because I felt it was my obligation 
And uh, people, oh, well, I'm old school. Yeah, I believe in talking to people. That's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's so old. That's so old. <laughs> that's really old. Oh, you know, my God. You know, no. That's so old. Yeah, I don't no, even no, actually so talk. I believe what? in appearing in a program like what? this. That is really old. <laughs> you know, Dinosaur. having a face to face conversation right, right. And, and telling people what you think. And more importantly, listening to people. Right. And, yeah. and not using. Uh, you know, I, I, I sometimes think that I have kids, I have grandkids, you know, so I sometimes think social media is being used as a way not to talk to me. Right. <laughs> I texted you. Right. Isn't that enough? <laughs> no. How about a phone call? How about making an appearance? But weren't some of the reasons that he said that it was taking a while to uh, open his office, which I don't even know where his office is, is That's going to be. That's the other thing. Is, 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 in doing my research, Bree, I, I saw that um, of the 102 uh, newly elected Congress people, 88 of them have already opened their district offices. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of threw that, that excuse really out the window. And those who haven't have um, put up things like temporary office right, or right. office opening soon, and they provide a location. We know nothing about uh, his Guam operation. We have to take a break. We're going to come back and uh, find out what former Senator Fernando Estevez <laughs> thinks right here in the after party. There is no place on Guam like Chuck E. Cheese's. It's tons of fun with so many games. And parties are a blast, where everyone has fun. Come and party at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. Call and book your party today. Smiling is a natural response to joy, happiness, and excitement. Your smile reveals a lot about who you are. A healthy, beautiful smile can brighten your appearance and be an invitation to conversation and friendship. It is often one of the first things people notice about you. Now, thanks to the advancements in dentistry, you can have the smile you have always wanted, giving you an improved smile that looks and feels great. My silver fillings that I have, they're getting older in my mouth and I need to replace them. So I've started to do that and I've replaced them with the white fillings and I've had really great success with that. It looks good, they feel natural, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the bleaching. I want my, a white look all around my mouth. $9.99 large two-topic pizza delivered. Oh, no! Where'd that moment you realize <laughs> you're raising her right? No one out pizzas the hut. Uh, welcome back. We, we really don't have a lot of time to talk about so many issues. So real quick, uh, the congressman uh, in a text message to us, I mean, what world are we living in where I can't even get our congressman on the phone? In a text message, he said that um, one of the reasons why the district office won't open until March or possibly after is because there are just all these security requirements mm -hmm. uh, with opening a district office, and you guys don't understand, and there's just a lot of security things. Uh, I want to ask the congressman here, the former congressman, uh, how true is that, and do these security protocols really take, uh, you know, two to three months to, to implement? The, the protocols, if you're opening a new office, I'm sure they... You have to get uh, the General Services Administration to process them and all that. So I, I understand that. But the, the issue for me is still opening up a temporary right, office. Right. And so that's, that's pretty easily done. And the other issue is that, you know, in terms of mailing him stuff or emailing him, I know the protocols have changed with that. But that do, shouldn't be used as an excuse not to have uh, an email communication, not to say, you know, I've assigned this person to respond to your email. That's right. basically it. Well, what I wanted to talk about and get to was just his response to, you know, being criticized and about not opening his office. And so we do have uh, something that he had actually posted on on Facebook, and it was in response to Senator Regine Bisco Lee, who, who also said that uh, she had been getting phone calls right. and even offered her office, right, to, to accept yeah. 
appeared yeah. to be a temporary office. And so he said that I advise she be careful about thirsting for media attention from racists. It's not good for a federal affairs chair. And then he posted something that uh, Chris yeah. had posted on I have Twitter. A Twitter. Yeah, wait. <laughs> so a white lady is going to chair the Legislative Committee on Culture. Interesting. So racist. You. Gosh, that's right, Mr. Man. Barnett. <laughs> First of all, uh, Fernando, I want to talk to you about the, the reaction, because like I said in the beginning, there's the story, then there's the story of his reaction to the story. And I just feel like it's really petty for someone of, of a congressional office. I, I, I agree. I mean, the election's over right now. You serve everyone. There is no competition right now. Right. Everybody's your, your constituents. And it's politics. They're going to say things you don't like. That's that's part of the game. We all know that. Um, well, First of all, that's the first time I saw that post. And oh, I just okay. could think of so many other better terms than the word thirsting, you know, seeking. Yeah, I was you know, it, it was a bit, I think, a bit derogatory in mm -hmm. my view. Um, now, it's part of the whole thing, right? And, and you know, I tend to be, I think I'm a fair, fair guy. Right. You know, and I heard his response. I, I heard it the first time with Patty, and then I had to go to work, and then I caught it on, the, on K57, uh, like later in the afternoon around lunchtime. The rest of it, and I heard a response to that, you know, and it was, um, well, we don't want to set up an email address because we don't, in a year from now, we don't want people emailing the wrong address. Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard and, that. And I'm just thinking, like, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm wondering if people are buying this because I remember there was this great technology that came out in the 90s. Maybe you remember, Dr. Underwood. It's called email forwarding <laughs> and auto reply, <laughs> right? Um, and and it's, just, it's just surprising, you know, in, in the digital age when there are so many forms of communication, right? <laughs> that was probably I've a, heard a, of that. That's probably a big <laughs> thing, right? When that came hey, like, oh, my God, when I leave. He yeah. doesn't know how to do it. Still <laughs> get hurt from you, right? Um, and so with, you know, and, 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 and Congressman St. Nicholas being, as we've, we've all admitted to it, the master of social media with regards to Guam politics right now. Sure. Today. Yeah. You know, and not just social media, but digital platforms and capitalizing that to, to get a hold of his constituents. But, you know, being a Southern boy, right, and, and, and now I'm just a just plain old voter, right, I, I look at it as what I would hear, and I can hear the background noises of, of my constituents in the South if it were me. Lana, boy, you only know me when you need something. Right. You know, right. and, and yeah. because when you're campaigning, right, it, it wasn't a problem to have rallies. It wasn't a problem to get out there and go canvas. But now that they're trying to get a hold of you, you can't even get an email address well, that, up. You can't get a phone number. They're saying, contact me through Facebook. Won't hold a town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. and Can I have some so, cotton candy? <laughs> right. Well, yeah. even even on his Facebook pages, it doesn't even say that hey, my office isn't isn't going to be open till right. March. The yeah. last post I think was about the federal government shutdown. I mean, does he to just address. imagine this? He's so concerned about security, and Facebook is like the least secure the means Russians. of social media right. available. <laughs> I mean, even the Russians are there. So yeah. I'm thinking, well, how, how does how does this yeah. all logically yeah. work? Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, I I I, I hope he corrects his his whole approach to this, but at the end of the day, it sure seems to me that he's afraid of interacting with people. And I think that's... He's, a, he's uh, afraid. Yeah. He's I, just I afraid. So, you know, you, you don't come back to Guam your first trip back after you're being sworn in, and you come in and you don't announce it to people. Yeah. Right. I didn't that even know amazing. that he yeah. was here. That's just he was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I feel like, uh, you know, people questioned my motives in doing the story and really it was at the end of the day simply about uh, these people who voted this guy into the office in the office who now that he's in office they need that audience they need things like my passport is going to expire I have a death in the family I need to travel on it uh, the congressional district office is the only uh, place they're going to hook that up you know veterans uh, people with social security concerns I mean just the list goes on and on and and I didn't realize how how big a part of the constituent services it's being enormous. a congressperson well, is. Yeah, you know, you know, just let's look at reality, Chris. You know, he he's risen without any obligation to talk to the media, and it works for him. There's no reason for him, I, I believe, in his head to change that formula. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And the constituents and the people, apparently, as of right now, are fine with that. You know, I mean, keep doing the media should keep doing their job and keep. You know, keep driving it forward, keep trying to get information. It's not easy. You know, some politicians are more forthcoming than others. But, I mean, the reality of the situation is that, as it seems, people just don't care. People don't care if he talks to the media. 
people like the narrative that they hear and they, i think that's that's just going to be the way it is until people don't want that anymore and that's right. just the reality of politics well let's uh take a break here uh, first episode of the after party and out the gate it's a hot one we'll be right back the great thing about technology isn't about how big fast or clever it is It's about delivering connections that empower people to achieve things. Try them for the first time. Connect with others. Or even rediscover the world around us. It's your world. Explore it. is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're going to be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're going to be here. We're your hometown carrier. And that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that hard work for you each and every day. When we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. Chaos unfolds as Taco Bell's beloved nacho fries vanish yet again. Where did you go? What if they were in another dimension? There are fries seasoned in Mexican spices trapped somewhere out there. And I'm gonna bring them home. Daddy's gonna bring you nacho fries. Start something new this year when you buy a new Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, or Ram from Cars Plus and Mighty. Like a new Jeep Compass Sport, $175 for paycheck. Or a new Chrysler Pacifica LX, $213 for paycheck. Or save $10,500 on a new Ram 1500. How about a new Jeep Wrangler Sport, only $309 for paycheck. Plus, receive a Cars Plus Shell Value card with every vehicle purchase. So this year, start something new with a new Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, or Ram. Only at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Visitors make memories on our island. They contribute millions of dollars every year to our community. So what does that mean? Tourism keeps our island's culture alive. And it strengthens our identity as Chamoru. Tourism creates opportunities for local businesses to thrive. The dishes I create feature local ingredients. ingredients come from local farms and create local jobs for farmers like us. For every job we see in tourism, there are hundreds more we don't see. From teachers, to babysitters, to engineers, we, we all, all work, work in, in the tourism industry. industry. Our visitor industry benefits everyone. It improves our income and gives back to our community. Meaning more opportunities for a better Guam. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin-coated gate and door access. 
Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. You know, uh, welcome back to the uh, first episode of uh, The After Party. And I like what you guys had said about um, Congressman St. Nicholas uh, kind of being afraid to interact uh, with people. And I remember when he was a senator how he um, changed the rules so people who want to get a uh, – people who are selling lunch plates – for medical fundraisers uh, can't go to senatorial offices, and you know I, I kind of <laughs> saw some of his logic, but I think I think you're right. I don't think he likes interacting with people yeah. because it's messy and he can't control yeah. the interaction the way he does on Facebook. Yeah. And you brought up the point that you know Facebook's good for talking at talking people, at, at you. People. Mm -hmm. You know, when you and with constituents, as you know, it's so complex. Sometimes their their issues, you know, are are so multifaceted. They require so they have so many moving parts. And you couldn't possibly do that in a Facebook message or or even a WhatsApp. Let's say, you know, some people have given out their uh, their cell numbers, right? Their right. mobile numbers. Um, a lot of uh, uh, elected officials do that, and um, you can't even get that in a five ten minute phone conversation. There right. really yeah. is no replacement for face to face contact um, when when dealing, especially things that are emotional, right? Veterans things, you know, veterans cemetery issues or uh, disability claims or um, just all these sorts of things that impact people's real everyday lives, you know, and then when they can't get to you, you're so far away anyway when you're in Washington, D.C. And then to have like this extra level of, I can't even get to you at home, you know, where where do I go? And it's like you're, you're kind of in the dark with that. And um, I mean, and, and, and uh, like Congressman Underwood said, I hope that improves, you know, in March when right. bang, everything happens and we have this great, <laughs> you know, fantastic, you know, all right. all pistons running, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's chugging along. And we hope that you know, we hope that. But for right now, today, you know, we we don't know. But but it's his, uh, his style of interaction that's that's most disturbing sure. because it's all designed on avoiding contact with people. Right. It's designed to avoid face to face interaction. It's designed to avoid emotional contact and then at the same time create the impression that somehow or other he's at the top of the world and he's mm -hmm. at the top of the food chain and we're just all supposed to be in a way subservient to him. Well, you know, yes, um, Mr. St. Nicholas, yes, you're a congressman, but you know, you're a public servant. Yeah. You know, read your own book that you wrote to your son. <laughs> read your own book about humility, uh, about oof. trust, about authenticity. It just, and, uh, and read those words yeah. very carefully because you made a big production out of writing this book to your son. And yet I read that, I reread portions of that last night and I kept thinking, this is what uh, a decent, human being public servant does. That's a, 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 that comes from the heart. Maybe it was ghost written. Well, I don't know. Are you the only guy who bought a copy? I wonder. No, I got no, a I copy. I, I read it. Copy. Yeah. I got a copy. <laughs> okay. I have a signed copy. Right, nice. nice. You're well, probably you know, going to get angry. Knows? Angry Graham, though, on Facebook coming no. at you now for saying that. No, who knows? He came in, right, last week or whenever it was. Maybe he did meet with um, constituents. He met with the Guam Contractors Association. So, I mean, we don't know that, but... Well, from what I'm hearing, he didn't really meet with anybody. <laughs> well, it's, you know, perception's reality, right? right. You know, yeah. politics, the truth doesn't always matter. Right. And right now the perception is, and, and this is coming from multiple senatorial offices, as I understand, people can't get a hold of him. His responsibility is if he's doing everything, he believes he's doing everything he can to reach out and make himself available to constituents, but constituents don't feel like he is, then it means just means he's not doing enough. Mm -hmm. So how right? hard would it have been for him to, um, instead of reacting and, you know, every time I do a story on this guy, he attacks my family, he attacks me personally, and, you know, I, I've been in the spotlight 20 years, I'm used to that. I still run for office. Right, how, <laughs> how easy would it have been for him to, instead of uh, attacking everybody who was concerned about these constituents' concerns, for him to come out and say, hey, okay, you're right, uh, here's my cell phone, uh, here's a number you can call. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to set up a town hall meeting. Instead, uh, he almost double or triples down on his stance that no, I'm not going to open the office. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I just think there's no surprise there. I mean, are you surprised? No. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, we're not. And I yeah. think though some people, you know, who are paying attention more, right? Because he's in the spotlight by himself, mm -hmm. and so people are paying attention more, yeah. right? People are seeing more of what's going on, and people are seeing. Some of the same things that people have been, you know, either complaining about or observing um, over the past couple of mm -hmm. election cycles, right, is, you know, he doesn't play nice with others. 
What's you know that? What I mean? we, and, and when you're when you're in the legislature and you're one of fifteen, you can hide sometimes, even in public view, because you're one of fifteen. You're the only representative of Guam in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. How you pick your committees, who, where you go, who you interact with, all of those are going to be under uh, a lot of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't. He needs to understand that the scrutiny is not provided by his staff. The scrutiny is provided by colleagues. The scrutiny is provided by the whole Guam community that's there. Mm -hmm. right. There's a Guam community there right. that's watching him mm -hmm. and listening to him and reporting back. So there's all of these things that he has to uh, contend with. And uh, he earned the spot. He, and he deserves uh, the respect that comes with that position. But he has to reciprocate. So Speaking of committees, you know, we're not on the House Armed Services Committee, something that, you know, Madeline's been on for forever. Or, but or natural he, resources. Every, right, but he's on member, the Financial Services every Committee. Every Guam delegate has been on armed services and on resources or, uh, you know, it used to be called different things. But we think about this. There's only one committee room in all of Washington, D.C. that has a Guam flag on it, and that's the Resources Committee, mm. and he's not there. And, you know, what do you say to people who and look that's, at that? And that's the committee that has oversight right. mm -hmm. over all insular issues, right. changes to the Organic Act, mm -hmm. all the policies that affect territories will almost always be referred to the House. But, but he's on like the House engineers. Financial Services right. Committee. An Army Corps well, of Engineers. That, is that, right. Yeah, is that yeah. going to benefit like, us? We've never had a congressman on that, right? Yeah. Well, but it's, a, it's banking, work? financial sure. services, insurance. It's all of these things, the regulations that work for that. And it's very influential, right? Uh, if that's your expertise, and if we were uh, Wall Street or we were a big banking center, maybe those things. But heck, our 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 economy is driven in large part by military spending. We need to be there right. at the table, and we need a congressman that the military will have to pay attention to because he's on armed services. No, but I think I think what part of what the congressman thinks is. Uh, it, it's very spiteful. For example, he didn't want to take Congresswoman Berdalio's office because it was her office. So that's part of the reason why we're all sitting here without a district office. Uh, he probably didn't want to be on the um, Natural Resources or Armed Services Committee because you guys have done that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he equates uh, his um, nomination to this financial committee as Guam landing on Mars. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. I, I mean. <laughs> well, I, I've listened, I, 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 I have to just make this final point. I listened to a speech that he gave over in Washington, D.C. He started off the speech by talking that he defeated an eight-term incumbent. And then he had to then go and run into someone who had 18 years of public service. And he defeated her, too. Right. I, to I don't speech. know what member of Congress goes to a policy forum and starts off by talking about how they defeat. They don't care. Mm -hmm. I, I defeated Ben Bloss, and every time I referred to Ben Bloss, I didn't refer to him as the guy I defeated. I referred to him as my esteemed predecessor. Nice. That's, that, that's the level at which we expect public service to occur. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you know, that being said, uh, obviously he won, and people, yeah. whether or not they pay attention, they, they, they're getting what they Want, I, think. Then, uh, I guess so. your, well, your we formula didn't work. We are out of work, time <laughs> yeah. for no the way. after party. Party's <laughs> over, guys. We need an after, after party. <laughs> <laughs> we can't talk about what I'm, I'm right. thirsting <laughs> for something right now. <laughs> Thanks, I'm Sabrina <laughs> Salas, Matt Tanani. Right. Thanks, Senator Fernando Estevez, Congressman Robert Underwood, and Kate Baltasar, my my racist co-host Chris Barnett. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. our show. Yeah, we'll see you. Bye, Nesta. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Explore your world.